welcome. Today's topic of today's lecture is heritage significance and values part 1. Remember last time we talked about the debate uh, of, about the heritage that uh, what should we preserve, why should we preserve and uh, how should it be preserved. And in that context we also talked about the divergent approaches of conservation. You remember we talked about two cases, one is the old city of Warsaw and another was the Coventry Cathedral of York. In both the cases the structures were damaged due to the war. But in case of Warsaw what they decided they sort of rebuilt the entire city whereas in case of Coventry Cathedral the war ravaged structure was preserved as it is and they built a new structure. So, almost a similar situation, but the approaches they took were very different. And why it was a very different approach, it, the answer lies to that is the significance and value that was contributed to the structures and that actually decided that what approach should be take, taken. So, the significance of a place should influence decision about its future and that is why it is very important. For example, in case of old city of Warsaw, what is important, the historic fabric or the association. We saw that uh, when it is declared as a world heritage site, they saw that the inner strength and determination of the nation, that intangible aspect is the value. And the process is the comprehensive reconstruction of the city is the process. Whereas in case of Coventry Cathedral, the quest for peace and reconciliation was the value, which is a symbolic value that attributed to the structure. And the preservation and the new construction is a process. So, what we saw in these two cases almost similar situation, but the value and significance they decided that whether it will be preserved, whether they will be reconstructed and how and that is attributed sometimes is acquired it gets on over the years and sometimes how people interpret that. That is why there is an interrelationship that is why it is very important to understand that what are the values and significance of a heritage site structure or pressing. So, as I said that the value is important and the conservation should be seen not as a product, but as a process. So, conservation as a process should take account of all the values that contribute to its significance. So, what is important? First of all, what is important is to understand the values and second is that assess the heritage significance of that particular cultural property structure or site. Now, people may value a place or a site or a structure for many reasons beyond its utility or personal association. Just utility is probably is not enough, it is actually that is not very important when we are talking about conservation, it is important, but it is not the only thing. So, let us see what are the different types of value. It can be for its distinctive, distinctive architectural landscape, it can be the story it can tell about its past is connection with the notable people or events, is land from flora and fauna, because they find it is beautiful or inspiring for its role as a focus of the community, architectural or historic interest or scientific interest or there can be special interest also. So, as we can see that there are different types of values and significance and we must understand that what are these values in a particular context. Let us take one by one. For example, distinctive architecture or landscape. Some of the uh, let us uh, discuss some of the structures or examples. This is Mukteshwar temple Bhuvaneshwar Orissa which is built in 950 AD. It is a typical Odisha temple, a beautiful example of a Nagra style of architecture. It is not a very uh, large structure, it is a very small structure, but why is important? It is important because it is an unique example of the this particular style of architecture and uh, it was also marked as transition uh, which that particular style was going through at that time and that is why it is very important for architectural reason. If you talk about another example, Victoria Memorial Hall, Kolkata, entirely different architectural style built bit quite recently in 1906 and 1921, it is Indo-Saracenic revivalist style 
Uh, it was built, it is a beautiful structure, it almost now has become an icon of Kolkata. Uh, it was built to commemorate uh, Queen Victoria. Uh, it was uh, uh, Lord Curzon who actually took the initiative to build it and it is important because it is for architecture. So, when you talk about architecture, it is not only uh, how it looks, but its construction technology, how that huge structure was built, the structural system, is everything is very important when you talk about the architecture. Let us talk about another structure, Kutub Minar Delhi, constructed during oh, 1192 uh, and 1220. It is an Iranian style. It is actually the value may be symbolic or uh, religious, but it is very important because of its structure, it is an architectural uh, marvel. So, we have taken three different examples of a three different architectural style and each one has a value because it is depicting a particular architecture uh, pert pertaining to that period or pertaining to that style is a unique example of that. Let us talk about landscape. Uh, this is Cheshma Shahi in Kashmir Mughal garden and which is important because the terrace garden, the fountains and the aqueduct all of these contributed to the landscape value of this terrace garden. It is a beautiful site, beautiful landscape which was built uh, for recreational purpose. Uh, another example we can talk about entirely different Studley Royal in UK which is an 18th century landscape water garden, a picturesque romantic style. Why these two are very unique? in a particular context. Both are dealing with water in a different way, one is aqueduct, another is the thing. The Stanley Royal is important because it is very unique. The no such sort of water garden existed that time. The style wise, the landscape feature wise is very unique and similarly this terrace garden in and when we are talking about the terrace garden, we must remember it is not only uh, the terrace garden, the aqueducts, the different technology which was used that time, all of these contribute to the uniqueness of this landscape feature. So, this landscape again uh, has some sort of a built up structure, man made structure, but they are important because predominantly for its landscape value. When we talk about landscape, there are other examples like Vernad Lake in Kerala. It is very important, it is a tourist place, people from all over the world and uh, different places come to, uh, these, there are a lot of resorts which are there and uh, also we can see an entirely different one which is the Grand Canyon USA, a geological formation, intricate and colorful landscape. These two examples, they are very different from the earlier example of landscape, they are also important for the landscape because these are natural formations and whereas the other two examples were for the man-made landscape. So, even in landscape we can have a different types of landscape. But in these two examples of Grand Canyon and this lake in Kerala, we must understand there is something more value attached to it that is ecological because this also talks about uh, not only uh, the landscape feature, but also the community, the flora and fauna and other things. Let us talk about another one which is the narration that they also can be the heritage site which talks about or which tells us about something. The story it can tell about the past. For example, this looks like it is not a monumental building, it looks like an ordinary streetscape. Uh, what it is, where it is? It is actually Colonial Williamsburg in USA. It is a living history museum and private foundation presenting part of an historic district in the city of Williamsburg, Virginia, United States. It is not a living city, it is a museum, the entire city is a museum, it has been preserved the way it was like that with all the structures and the houses, the timber houses that because it depicts or narrates a particular period of history and that is why it has been preserved. This is one of the street in colonial, a normal street, but how do we preserve such historic uh, areas or city? It is not only enough to because they are narrating a story. Uh, or certain events or particular period, it is not enough to just preserve the fabric or the structure, but it is also important to narrate the story. So, when one goes to Williamsburg, there are a lot of events which take place. For example, this shows a recreated day in the life of a royal capital, uh, which is meticulously recreating the crucial period of 
a particular colonial era where the gunfighting, the fighting battle scenes are being recreated because it has to talk. It is the that fabric or the structures which have been preserved there, they become a stage set. They are authentic, they are preserved in an authentic way, but along with that it must also narrate that what it is all about. And to do that, the involvement of a lot of people are involved. So, as we can see that the local volunteers here, they are dressed up uh, in the women reenacting the colonial. So, there are a lot of skills, craftsmen, tradesmen which are there. Uh, they also dress up like that and they reenact the way it was, they used to dress, they used to uh, take part in the different activities and this is generally done by the local volunteers or the local stakeholders who uh, sort of contribute to enacting all these aspects. So, this narration becomes a very important part or why we should conserve. It also contributes one type of value. For this narrative history or narrating a particular period or time, a very interesting case is the Yorvik Viking Center in York, which is a living history museum. Let us see what it is. Uh, if you look at from outside, it is only uh, a very normal structure from the outside at the street level, but it is actually a museum and a visitor attraction in York, Ulan in Yorkshire containing lifelike mannequins and life size dioramas depicting the Viking life in the city. It was created by the York Archaeological Trust in 1984, so it is not an ordinary museum. Uh, what it is about? Actually, uh, in York, uh, uh, as we can see that here under the, it is all happened underground in the basement that there are mannequins. So, there are the entire village which has been recreated and one can go in this type of small cars and move around in the villages, the seaside and other things and they recreate the entire thing. Uh, not only the smell, uh, not only the sound, but the smell and everything is recreated. But is it, is it an, an ordinary museum? No. Uh, what happened is that Yorkshire is basically a Roman city. The Romans came and built the city. So, wherever and it is a living city, old historic core of the York and uh, wherever one does some sort of an excavation or builds a new structure, every day almost they excavate or find out or discover the Roman ruins. So, that was that is quite common, the archaeological trust come there, do the investigation, they decide whether it is important or not and accordingly uh, either they document and they allow the new structure to come or otherwise they sort of if it is very important they preserve it. Now, at one point of time uh, it was known that before the Roman came there, the Viking also came and uh, there and settled. The, some of the names of the roads and the places show that the Vikings were there, but uh, it was an important trading hub. But where was the evidence? There was no evidence there. So, at one point of time uh, during 80s, what happened is that during 1976-81 in the Copper Gate, uh, which is uh, they were doing some excavation for building a, a shopping center in the heart of the old city. While doing that excavation, they found out a different type, it is not the Roman ruins, they found out a different types of uh, structures, it is almost patch out, round shaped and other things. And so, the archaeological trust came and they started seeing, investigating what happened, they have their own way of doing. So, all sort of detailed investigation was going on. And when the detailed investigation was going on and after that they uh, found out that actually there was a Viking village in that place. So, there was an actual evidence so far what was believed and it, there is an evidence for there. Now, the question comes is that how sort of they should it, should it they preserve because it is very important they can take the photographs and put it in the museum and archive and allow the uh, modern uh, development to go. But while that excavation was going on, the local people showed a lot of interest and they were standing there as you can see that they used to understand what is the, the thing, what is the discovery, what they found. So, there is a lot of interest was generated because of the Viking village and, and that particular site. So, they decided to do something. What they did? So, this they converted that into a living history museum of the Viking based on the evidence, actual archaeological evidence which was found in that site. And that site, that location was very important to recreate the village. 
So, the village was recreated, then it shows a lot of the remains and the, the discoveries what they found from the site and also in addition to that what they do is that every year there is a Viking festival which goes on in New York almost for 15 days. There is a boat, the way the, they used to create the boat, they create the boat, uh, they construct the boat, uh, a lot of uh, uh, interest is created, tourists come, a lot of festival in happens, there is a mock fight uh, which is to happen, they dress up between the two things. So, it, it is really a very successful event. And, but in addition to that, the museum is uh, there in the basement of that ordinary looking structure and over that, uh, that there is a shopping center which has come up. So, I think that is a very, very interesting example that York big Viking center in New York where continuity of the past and present has, still, has been established. So, we see that we are talking about the divergent, divergent approaches. What could have done? They could have done the investigation, they could have shifted that to some other museum somewhere, taken the photographs and uh, kept it in the museum. But what is important is not only the evidence, but the site of the location is very important. At the same time, that huge site in a sort of a uh, uh, city which has a prime land of the old city, uh, which is a commercial area, now also partly residential area. So, there to keep a huge space like that does not make any sense economic sense. So, what they did is that they decided that the entire basement will be converted into a museum in actual site. They, in part of the museum, they show actual excavation how it was constructed and over the site they sort of built. I think it is a very good example and by uh, not only the shopping center has come up, the Yorvik Viking center and this Viking center has now become a tourist attraction of Yorkshire and generate a lot of economy for that. So, this is a very good example where the continuity of past and present can come up and can be built up on the actual evidence. And again, we come back to the significance. What is the significance? Significance is the narration of a particular time of a story that who came there and settled for some time. Let us talk about another types of value and significance association. This is again a very, very ordinary looking house. It is, uh, you can see that, uh, if you can recognize that it is ordinary looking, but it is for a very important association with a very important person. It is actually Shabarmurti Ashram, Ahmedabad, where a father of the nation, Gandhiji, stayed there and spent a very meaningful part of his life. So, this is the place, this structure, this house, which is actually very, very ordinary looking, but it is has acquired a significance and value because of his association with a very, very important personality. And because it is important because of his association that value, then it is that is why it is very important to keep not only the structure like at, as it is, but it is also very important to keep the interior of the structure, the way he used to stay, the furniture and everything. Sometimes they are just taken from the photograph, sometimes they are the authentic furniture, original furniture has been kept. So, the interior also very important because it is association with the person who stayed here. Also, we must understand that Shabarmuthi Ashram is not only important because Gandhiji stayed here, but it is also important because it played a very important part of the Indian independence movement because a lot of activities and events happened here. So, on one hand it is association with a notable person, on the other hand it is association with the Indian's freedom movement which happened here. And that is why this ordinary looking structure has acquired a value and a significance because it narrates that story, narrates that events, narrates the association with that person. And that sort of goes on attributing to the combined values and significance and that decide how it should be preserved. Let us talk about a similar other structure, which again is a very ordinary looking structure. It is located in uh, uh, West Bengal it is also important for his association. It is association with a very noted author, Shara Chandra Chattopadhyay, who stayed there for a significant part of his life and composed a lot of his novels. 
uh, the, that time the river was uh, flowing very close to the house, this structure. Now, it has shifted away, but this structure has been now declared as a heritage structure and recently it has been sort of uh, uh, preserved, restored and uh, now as we are talking about that it is because of the association value it is important, it is very important to keep not only the outside of the structure, it is very important to keep the interior also because he it is important because he stayed there. So, his daily life how he depicted there is very important that is why the chairs, the study table, he practiced homeopathy and each and everything is very important and they are kept as it is the way he used to stay because this structure is important uh, because not only association his person, but it also narrates or he also sort of talks about the his association through all this uh, sort of important furniture, Im, uh, the important elements, each and every room is actually shows that how this uh, person, a very noted author who is very respected, how he used to stay there. So, this is association and connected with the notable people, these are the two examples and also uh, Shabur Muthi Ashram, we talked about the event of the ind uh, independence movement. So, as we can see that some of his uh, stra daily uh, use items are kept there and preserved. Now, we have to also talk about the event. We talked about Shavur Muthi Ashram as association with the event of the a lot of events of the Indian freedom movement. That does not mean always the event are always very uh, when we sort of attribute a value and significance, this does not mean event are always sort of. Uh, uh, positive events. There can be events which are uh, not so positive, but very important. Uh, for example, this one, uh, this is a Swiss concentration camp in Poland. Uh, this is the place where a uh, huge number of Jews and other people were kept there. They were burnt alive in the gas chamber from the children to the old people, ladies, they were brought here and this has been preserved and kept as a living museum again, a uh, museum because of its association with a particular event of history. And uh, there is a museum inside, it depicts like you can see the lot of uh, shoes are there, it shows uh, the people who were brought here and they were burnt alive in the gas chamber. So, their shoes have been kept there to show the enormity of the problem, the that uh, incident which take place here. Uh, there is also this structure which is a burn structure and it has been preserved like that, what it, what it is. It actually is a structure uh, which sort of exploded and where the inmates who sort of smuggled in the and some bombs. Uh, with the help of the local people and they exploded that. So, it is an ex and it has been preserved just like that because it shows that the strength of the inmates who were really fighting every day and how they sort of also had the courage to protect. So, it has been preserved for that. So, as I said that this association can be uh, with the different types of events and different types of people to depict the different types of significance and the values. So, as we can see that as we have seen in all this example, the it can be for the uh, values and significant can be for architecture, for landscape, for ecological reasons, for association with person or can be with an event and it can be significant or valuable because of the narration as we have seen. And so, uh, we have seen some of the aspects, again I am sort of a summarizing, it can be for its distinctive architecture or landscape, the significance can be, the story it can tell about the past, we have seen some of the examples, 
this connection with the notable people or events and the events which are not so uh, not so important and one can ask that why should we try to remember something uh, which is so so uh, brings sorrow in our mind uh, i remember uh, uh, that uh, something is written in that camp that one must remember such event uh, which are not happy events so that such type of mistakes do not happen in future. That is why it is very important to sort of keep that and the people should see that, that, that what type of things can happen if people do not go in the right way. So, so that we do not do the mistake like that in future is very important for that. Uh, so, in the next lecture we will talk about the landform, flora and fauna, the other types of significance and the values. Uh, we also will talk about the values can be because they find it beautiful and inspiring. Uh, they means the people and the community uh, for something uh, preserved because the value can be the role of the focus of a community or it can be architectural or historic interest or scientific interest and it can be of special interest also. So, in our next lecture we will talk about this type of uh, examples and the values and significance.